everyone, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. Give you guys a few minutes to jump on here. I am drinking a fruit smoothie this morning. Let's see, it's a very small piece of banana. Bananas and I don't get along, but it adds sweetness to it. And I've got strawberries and blueberries and raspberries and black raspberries. A little bit of kale in there. A little bit of Himalayan seasoned salt. And I've got my stevia in here. Good morning, Teresa. What are you drinking this morning? I've got my smoothie going on. I imagine everybody's children are heading back to school this week or next. And I'm, I'm curious, are you folks dealing with mixed feelings? Are you um, saddened? Are you excited? Or are you, are you dealing with the mix of the two? Morning, Ashley. Water. Good choice, Teresa. <laughs> Morning, lovely. I asked everybody what they were drinking. I've got my, my smoothie going on. The Mountain Boy and I are doing a very radical 10-day cleanse. And uh, I'm used to this. Uh, the Mountain Boy has never gone without more than a meal um, ever. Good morning, Chad. So this process has been a bit difficult for him. I am actually doing this just to uh, be a support for him and uh, accountability partner. So it's not that it won't um, help me. Um, I've had some issues with candida returning, so that is a great way to uh, allow your digestive system a break and also get rid of the toxins in your gut. Feeling down and out today. Please pray for me. Chad, you got it lifting you up and um, we'll check in on you. Uh, weather change, barometric pressure plays a role in all that stuff and so does the enemy. I have something good to read later that I think you will like, Chad. But um, how many of you, your kids are heading back to school this week? Good morning, Tammy. Have your kids headed back to school? Uh, in this area, the kids started school on Monday, so um, a lot of parents with mixed feelings. Uh, I always struggled with that too. It was like a bittersweet thing because, you know, I missed my time with them, but I also had free time back. So, let me see. Ashley has said, I have a mix of emotions about school starting. Oh, that's right. I forgot about your guy starting too. Yeah, kindergarten's tough. And, and, and also, your guy has been in for a little while, I believe. This isn't his first year, is it? This is his second the anxiety is just around change and having to drive to Moscow every morning, which gets hard with Jess. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll be praying for you, too, Ashley. Um, if I can be of help to you and provide rides um, and help out, let me know. Um, I'll do what I can. I love the way you guys communicate with each other. That is just so awesome. I figured today we would talk about uh, preparing for winter. Um... Our weather has greatly changed. Oh, no worries. Keep typing then, Ashley. I understand. I hit the send button too often, and occasionally I send messages to the wrong person, especially in Facebook Messenger, because it pops up and you go to type, and it is the last person, not the person you were trying to type to. I've done that a couple times lately. Anyway, um, our weather has greatly changed. Our seasons change very fast. Our seasons, are, our summer is very short. We had like uh, 99 to 109 degree temperatures, and then all of a sudden it's down to 60s and 70s. So our mornings are very cool. Some people are experiencing frosts already. Um, it was 40 degrees here on Friday. So it's pretty crazy how the temperatures change and drop, but there's so many things to think about, at least for us in our area, um, but I imagine there's many for you to think about too. Um, one of the things I don't have in the notes is our gardening. You know, with the frost coming in, a lot of us out here, and I, I am really missing my garden this year, and I'm really missing my can canning. Um, it's It's really difficult for me because I love being in my garden and I'm unable to do that right now with the mold. I've got to find myself a good mask that I can be in my garden um, ready for the apocalypse because it's going to have to be one of those types of masks 
that will enable me to be out there without um, inhaling and, and being around the mold. Um, so we shall see. But there's a lot of uh, winter gardening that can be done. Uh, winter, um, the colder season plants can be planted and uh, just getting your garden wrapped up, getting things in so they don't freeze, getting everything canned. My friend Michelle is canning like a champ. She always has a beautiful garden. And right now would be when I'd be canning my chili sauce and pickles. And um, I just miss it. I miss it greatly. I can't afford to buy all the produce right now um, to be able to do that. So we're just gonna go into winter. My, stock, my, my shelves are still stocked. Uh, because I canned so much last year, so that is a great benefit and a plus. But I encourage you guys uh, to reap the harvest now. There's so much available apples and pears for great uh, butters and, and apple sauces and um, pie fillings that you can can. There's so much out there, as well as all your uh, summer uh, vegetables coming in. Uh, the tomatoes are uh, you know ripe on the vine. You know, getting all your sauces and your diced tomatoes and uh, chili sauces and all that together is a really great way to prepare for your winter and really get your shelf stock. How many of you are canning right now? Ashley says, while you guys are sharing with me what you're canning, she says, uh, yes, he's starting second grade. The excited part is because it takes a lot of energy for me to have him home. And this was the first summer in five years I've been able to have him home with Jess work, while Jess works. Yeah, I know. And you guys, and I was so grateful to see you guys being able to get out because I know over the years you haven't been able to. You've been bed bound. So I'm so excited about that for you too. And she said I'm uber thankful for that and, and loved it. But when I have to use my microscopic amount of energy to make a meal and answer questions, Questions. So with him being gone a few hours a day, I'll be able to focus more faithfully on my health and rebuilding. So I think that will be good. And I'm trying to be excited. Just having a tad less on my plate, I think, will be good. Pros and cons to having him in it or out of school. So I'm just thankful for both and going with the flow. Yeah, and... And that's the key thing is just rolling with it. But you will definitely be in my prayers. I understand your struggles greatly and um, understand those couple hours of just being able to regroup, which is so huge. Been canning pasta, salsa, and getting ready to make applesauce. Awesome, Chris. And thanks for joining. Yeah, uh, Ashley, I have got some amazing prayer warriors here. Um, any of you that need prayer, don't hesitate to ask Chad and Tammy, and um, Ashley too. Um, we've got a great community of prayer warriors, so never hesitate, and remember too that you do not need to share the details of your prayer needs. If you need prayers and there's something going on, you know, you don't have to share. You can just ask for prayers, and that's all we need to know. So just keep that in mind. Don't want you to feel pressured. Um, I'm so excited that you're uh, able to can, Chris. I, I miss it so much. I got my jellies and jams done this spring, because I was able to forage from the wild, but I wasn't able to grow a garden. And also, um, like I said, I'm not able to afford to purchase the amount of produce I need to put things on my shelf. So as things become available to me, I will certainly be canning, and we will probably be canning meat this year. Uh, we have four in the household right now, and all have hunting licenses and are after elk and deer. So I, I know our, our freezer and our shelves will be full, and I know that God will provide for us. We have a good cache of food from last year, and August of every year, I stock up. Um, we are in a location where sometimes we can get in and out, and sometimes we can't. Um, our first year here, we were stuck back here for eight and a half weeks. Part of that was by choice because we really didn't have anywhere to go. We were working from home solely, and... Um, there was no sense ruining a vehicle to try to get out. Plus, we had just gotten finished getting into our home, and the break was just tremendously wonderful. So we put on our snowshoes and got out and just really enjoyed things. Now, that situation could be really different if you don't have food. We had plenty of food. I stocked up. Ashley says, not canning anything yet, only hoping to do a bit of water bathing this summer. Probably mostly later in the fall. Elderberries and apple butter, etc. We will see if it actually happens, but it's fun planning. I miss the fun and the smells of canning. Hopefully next year I can do some more. 
I totally hear that. Apple butter has the most amazing smell that permeates your home. Oh, gosh. Our goal is actually to do that on the open fire. I have a huge kettle. I think I shared the story a couple weeks ago about uh, finding the kettle for the mountain man. Um, so that is something that we would like to do in elderberries. I love making syrup and uh, jelly and, and uh, tinctures with that, too. You, girl, have been doing a lot with the uh, medicinal plants. You're welcome to share that on here, that you have been doing amazing foraging. I would love to spend time foraging with you and learn what you know uh, with all the local plants. And maybe one day you and I can get together and we can can for a day so you can have that wonderful smell going through your house. And that way, if you need to lay down, I can keep going. So put that on your list, too. I would, be, I would love to do that, and I miss spending time with you. So... In addition to um, canning and, and um, even food, you got to think of all the other things that um, you guys need to prepare for for winter. We found that kettle. I'll, I'll have to share that story with you. Uh, are you guys all familiar with the story of the kettle or should I share it? If, if, if you haven't heard it, I'll share it. Um, but we stock up on everything we need, all of our spices. Remember, we make everything from scratch. So in the wintertime, I will make my salad dressings with olive oil and my seasonings um, or avocado oil, um, hemp oil sometimes. Um, so I purchase all my raw spices and my seasonings. I make my own chili powder seasonings and different seasonings combined because then I know what's in them. Anything that says natural flavorings, I have to stay away from unless it specifically says non-GMO and organic because the natural flavorings anymore have too many things nestled in it that I cannot have and that cause my whole body to swell. It's really awful. So I also stock up on all my raw ingredients. I don't stock up on anything processed. We stock up on pounds and pounds of potatoes. Okay, Chad. Um, I'll share that in just a second. Um... I also stock up on all my raw ingredients, my legumes, my rices and grains, my flours or my berries so that I can mill my own flours. Um, I stock up on hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food. Um, some people have been at my house and said that we are absolutely lunatics and are wasting so much food, but what people don't realize is that when you are making everything from scratch, you go through a lot of of raw ingredients and when you are planning from August to August um, that's a lot of food and of course you know we try to have beyond that so that but that's my game plan always is because when we were building our house we started to get snow in September while the mountain man was on the backhoe working here clearing things so we have learned to prepare um, way in advance so that we don't have to worry about anything and and you take the stress off of yourself by preparing. Chad said he thinks he's heard about the story, but he said to share it. So I'm on my motorcycle. Good morning, Erica. Hey, girlfriend. Um, I was on my motorcycle and I went by a yard sale and I absolutely love yard sailing and thrifting and all that stuff. You guys know that. So I'm going by this yard sale. This was back east and I see this huge kettle. It was in the spring. I had been looking all winter, wanted to get the Mountain Man this big kettle for Christmas, and every time I found one, they were around 100 bucks. and as soon as I'd find the ad, I'd call, and they were already gone. So I saw this thing, so I spun my bike around and went back, and there were two guys standing by this kettle, and I'm like, how much do you want for this kettle? And you guys know me. I'm very vocal. I'm very excitable, um, animated, if you will. And um, I'm sure my excitement was shining through, and I'm like, how much do you want for the kettle? And the guy says, 45 bucks, and I'm like, sold. The guy standing next to him goes, well, if she wants it that bad, I'll let her have it. So I actually stole the kettle right out from some guy, <laughs> but it is massive. It is one of the really big ones. And of course, I couldn't strap it to the back of my motorcycle, and they were packing up, so I had to fly home and get the truck and get back there quick to get it. But what a find, 45 bucks. Ashley says... You use a lot of food when you are cooking from scratch. It's really not that much. I mean, if people tried to get enough freezer meals for a year, they would be shocked. Most people don't have enough in their pantry to last a month, so they have no concept of how much to, we eat. So it's really not that much. Yeah, yeah, and it's so true. It's so, so true. And that always scares me when, when people only have such a limited amount of food. I am so excited. I know. Tell me. 40, 45 bucks. 
I know, it's absolutely incredible. That was a huge steal, and then to steal it out from underneath that guy, right? <laughs> So one of these days, one of the other goals we wanted to do was to have like a community gathering and make a big uh, vat of like chicken noodle soup or something like that, or vegetable soup, and, and invite everybody over. We haven't gotten that far yet, but we are trying. <laughs> but that would be really awesome. Butcher some of our chickens and, and have a party. Chad, you'll have to make a trip up. <laughs> and Tammy, you're not that far either. <laughs> But yeah, having, having food, you know, your raw ingredients, people just don't realize. And it's really scary to me to see people without and not having enough. And um, it's, it's really, really awesome when you want to make absolutely anything and you just go downstairs and you get it. Or you reach in your pantry that's right in your kitchen. My pantry is my, where I restock things and my basement is where I restock from. So it's really, really important to have food on hand. And guys, I'm going to just remind you of something. Last year, or maybe it was the year before, it was the spring before, we had lots of mudslides. And we've had roads that totally disappeared on us. They just were washed away in the mud and um, not usable. So our two main roads into our area and into our valley were under were, were jeopardized one was on with a mudslide and the other was with extreme um, flooding so the big trucks couldn't get into our area and thankfully it wasn't for a long time but had more damage been done you know it could have been months till food could have been brought back into our stores so you never know what is going to happen and you never know what's ahead and the people that you know, shun us for living the way they do, they are going to be the ones that are wishing later that they were set up the way we are. And, you know, I don't ever wish anybody bad things, but if you're not willing to, to you know, understand and, and comprehend the purposes behind it, you know, you're going to put yourself and your family in jeopardy if situations set in. So that's why I wanted to talk about winter preparation because our, our temperatures are cooler. Our winter and our fall is going to come fast. And our fall is like our summer. It's like you drive through a small town and it's gone. Same with summer here. You know, we get our rainy season, you skip spring, you get a little bit of summer, and, and then you're into fall, you skip fall, and then you got lots of snow for a while. So, you know, every area is different and every area has its different things to contend with. So wherever you are, you've got to keep in mind the things that could be obstacles for you at different times of the year. And some people neglect to think of food and, and think forward with food as far as having multiple months. If you don't have a place to store a year's worth of food, then I would suggest that you at least have three or four months worth of food on hand. If you're in a small place, in an apartment, you can buy freeze-dried food, you can buy canned food. Now I have been trying to stay away from canned foods because of the metals leaching into the food. So we do utilize a lot more freeze-dried foods. We can most of what we eat, but I do have freeze-dried foods involved in, in my cache because I can pull out bananas, I can pull out strawberries or blueberries, and I, or even zucchini. Now, I freeze a lot of zucchini, shredded zucchini and such, and I can zucchini and squash. But when you have and are unable to, I'm purchasing up the freeze-dried stuff so that in a pinch I can rehydrate that food and make us, you know, nice desserts. You know, it's nice to have a treat in the winter months. It's nice to be able to still continue to eat well. Even in our situation, I've shared with you guys, you know, three years ago when we went six and a half months without an income, we never went without a meal. And we did not have to forage and we did not have to harvest anything. We were, we were set. And we are now, too. We, you know, we, we've been in a, a struggle this year. And when you plan ahead, you, you are diverting some of your struggles when when things set in so I just want to encourage you guys to consider that and um, you know like if you are in an apartment in small area you can definitely put things under the bed in the back of the closet you know there's behind the couch in corners you know there's 
lots of ways you can store things if you really get creative. So keep that in mind. Um, what are some of the things that you guys stock up on food-wise and what are some things that are really important to you guys when it comes to your winter cash? We use the five gallon buckets as a mattress support. because we needed to keep our food um, from um, the elements and also from the critters. And we also needed to keep the aromas down so that we didn't have bears frequenting and whatever else might decide to join us. So, yeah, that's a great, great way to do things. And and just stashing stuff in corners and in cubies and, and in, under your clothes in the closet. You know, whatever you need to do. But And freeze-dried food is one of the benefits with that is that there's so much more food when it comes to freeze-dried food. It's lightweight and it's easy, easy, easy to store. Chris says, we grow all our vegetables in can or freeze for the whole winter and cook about everything from scratch, making our own jams, and we live, live in town. Awesome. Awesome. There are no limitations to what you can do regardless where you are, and that is awesome. And I'm really glad you said that, Chris, because there's so many people that live in town and feel like they can't do anything. But right now, I have stuff growing on my back porch in pots because I can't get in the garden, but I wanted some things. The guys really like their hot sauce, so I am growing hab habaneros and jalapenos, as I say, jalapenos. <laughs> I speak my own language at home here. But anyway, um, you know, there's all kinds of ways you can grow things, even in small spaces. Vertical growing is, is such a big thing and, and so easy to do. And, and growing in pots, we did that before, too, when we first started out here. Before our garden was in place, we were growing in big tubs. So you have to make do with what you have and, and be able to utilize what you have and benefit from it. And just sometimes you have to be creative. Good morning, Zach. So what are some other um, things that you think of when you think of winter preparation? Some of the other things I have down um, are winterizing your house and your cars, which we'll get into in depth, firewood and heat source ga gathered and ready. Uh, we do 100% wood heat, so it's something that we do all year long. Um, rather than wait till the end, um, like right now, we did finally get a rain um, on Sunday into Monday, which has really made such a huge difference out here. We were living in such a tinderbox, and they put on um, limitations for using chainsaws and, and uh, ATVs, and, and the logging crews get limited on their work hours uh, just because of chance of fire. So you never know when that's going to happen. So... Be, rather than waiting till the end and panicking and or not being able to get in the woods, we start out as soon as we can. As soon as our rainy season is over, we're out in the woods gathering firewood. So that's another thing, you know, that can be a fun project. It's something that gets us out in the woods. It's something that we all do together. And and then our, our woodshed is full. And, and that, again, takes the stress off and the panic off of having to do things in a crunch. Uh, we talked about food storage and harvesting. Um, getting your snow equipment ready is really important. And also retiring your summer equipment. Uh, not everybody does it this way, but we like to be able to service our summer equipment, mowers, weed whackers, you know, chainsaws, whatever. Our chainsaws get used all year long. But service them, get them oiled up and, and ready for their winter rest and then they're ready to go in spring. Um, also if you have anything that's broken, you know, you have time to fix it over the winter months so that you can have it ready for
that truck down. Winterizing everything with an engine or gearbox and the yard and coop. Firewood for sure. Yep. Yeah, and animals is the next thing that I was going to mention. For our chickens, we have to winterize them too. But um, the mountain man built a uh, snow plow for the front of our homestead truck. And right at the end of uh, summer, beginning of fall last year, it died and we didn't get a chance to figure out what was going on with it. And our backhoe has been down for, goodness, four years. Uh, we got the new parts. New parts are in. It's still giving us some trouble, so we're looking into some of the mechanical side of things and maybe just some of the cables and such. But we're trying to get that baby up and running. Um, thank you, Chad, for helping us find the parts, which we couldn't find for two years. So thank you, Chad. Um, if you're in Utah and you need a big equipment person, Chad is your man. Uh, so that is on the list to try to get running. It would be very helpful to have that piece of equipment running to be able to clear the snow and do the odds and ends chores that we need to do here. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Oftentimes we have trees fall uh, due to high winds or ice or whatever. <laughs> Chad said he's only a phone call away. You can find him at vandalservices.com. And... Um, there's a shout out for you, Chad. We'll get you some business. <laughs> um, but you never know what the winners, you never know what day to day is going to bring. So really being prepared and having your equipment ready uh, is really important. Things break, things happen, so you need to learn to roll with the punches instead of letting it stress you out and, and be in a panic. You know, uh, our first year here, like I said, we didn't have to be in a panic because we didn't have anywhere to go. Now we have jobs and different things. Um, the mountain man is running his construction business, so um, we need to get out uh, periodically. Uh, the mountain man is going to be converting uh, his winter months into also doing custom leather work and knives and sheaths and axe sheaths, so there will be more coming on that. But stay tuned for that. Uh, when we get into our nitty-gritty winter months, that's probably what he's going to convert over to. Uh, the mountain boy is still making his moccasins. you know. So for those of you that work from home, it's nice to, have, to be a little diverse, that if you can't do the one thing, you can do the other. Um, but with us having to get in and out for the construction business, it's made things a little bit different for us. And um, our lane looks uh, very... The, the mile long lane looks really nice in the summertime. You don't really see the, the uh, dangerous aspects of it until the ice and snow are on it and what it can do to a vehicle when you end up in a ditch. So anyway, keep your equipment ready and, and get that prepared. Snow shovels, uh, snow blowers, get all that stuff together. Um, also, winterizing your home is really important. If you've got drafts and things uh, coming in your windows or under your doors, um, putting plastic up over your windows, uh, you can stuff socks or create a, a, a big cloth log that's stuffed um, to put in front of your door to help keep the drafts out. That will help your home be more efficient. Um, a good wood stove is really important. Um, good heat is important. And backup heat is also important. Um, now, we won't run out of firewood, but let's just say something happens to our wood stove or our chimney or something. Um, we do have a backup propane heater. Now, that, I will tell you, is still in the box because we got that um, to run when we leave the house in the winter time. However, in the last eight years, we don't leave the house in the winter time. And our wood stove still keeps going all day. So there was, has been no need to put it in place. But you never know what might happen if you have electric heat. You definitely want to have some source of backup heat because, um, especially out here, the electric is out all the time. The phones are down all the time. So having backups is always important. You know that we preach on that all the time with our our uh, day packs and our, our bigger packs. You know, we have three of everything in it that is essential to our survival. Um, sometimes more uh, out of fetish sometimes, I guess. The mountain boy has lots of knives. <laughs> but you can never go wrong having extra because some things fail. So, 
But winterizing your house and getting it ready uh, is really important. Um, having those extra backup things. Good morning, Rachel. I am sending prayers your way. Guys, if you would please lift Rachel up. She is actually joining us live from the hospital today. Um, she is having some gallbladder issues, so please pray for her. Good morning, Janet. Okay, we have a couple comments here. Chad says, cheap pool noodles cut down in the middle is make great uh, gaps for the door or for the gaps in the door. That's awesome. Never would have even thought of that. So that's awesome. If you want to decorate it, put a, uh, a fabric coat covering on it and there you go. And yeah, I'm sure that's good insulation. Tammy says we have to have backup heat. The air quality in the valley gets bad and we aren't allowed to burn the cook stove. Wow. Yeah, so I guess you do have to have that. And that was a concern of ours with the temperatures getting cooler here and not having rain, you know, you, people start doing fires and, you know, the sparks coming out of the chimneys and stuff. I mean, that's just such an opportunity for fire. So thankfully we got rain Sunday night and into Monday enough to make a difference. So thankful for that. But that's tough. And yeah, some of the valleys really do hold smoke. Um, I know Chad mentioned that with uh, the fires. And, you know, we notice that when we go into the towns here, you know, there's a lot of uh, smoke lingering. And uh, so I never considered that, though, that they would actually limit that. So what is your backup heat, if you don't mind me asking, Tammy? Ah, good morning, Pat. Pat is joining us, too. And Pat's another person you can lift in prayer. Pat is... Um, dealing with cancer and he is such an, a trooper and such a positive person so um, I always ask everybody to lift him in prayer to help him on his journey and uh, again Rachel could use prayers and Chad this morning so and Ashley and I'm so grateful that you guys asked for prayer that is just so awesome and that you're also willing to pray for everybody else that just makes my heart sing um, I wanted to I just thought of something I wanted to jump back on who are we praying for? Missed the name. Pat Kenny and Rachel and Ashley from previously. A gas furnace? Okay. Yeah, interesting. I never gave that any thought, and that would really stink, you know, because do you cook on your wood stove too in the winter months? Because I know that's how I do a lot of my cooking. So that would be really limiting. Um, and also, just in our mindset, having to use another resource and use our gas when we could be using something that's already providing heat. So, thanks, Tammy. You guys are the best prayer warriors. I love you all. That is just so, so awesome. We have such an amazing community. And um, something I thought of, too, with the food storage. I always have a party going online for Thrive Life, which is the freeze-dried food that I utilize. Um, you can check that out by going to treyerwilderness.com slash shop thrive. That was almost a tongue twister. Um, you can, you know, just if you're not used to freeze-dried food or you're shopping around, just purchase something small and give it a taste test and see what you think. I love having it on hand, though. Uh, we carry it when we go hiking and go packing. Uh, the guys were ecstatic to have potatoes and not have to pack potatoes in on, in 107 degrees with 80-plus uh, pounds on their back already. So, let's see. Lisa says, our wood stove isn't good for cooking, but I hope to upgrade in a couple years as the budget allows. That's nice. I, I would actually love to have a wood cook stove. I just have a wood stove that I cook on. I cook on it all winter when I can. Yeah, so that really gets limiting when they um, cut your abilities to do so. Once they uh, limit you, does the um, smoke leave pretty quickly and then they allow you to utilize again or do they just shut it down for the season? The other thing I wanted to mention in your food storage is Thrive Market. Thrive Market is amazing, especially for our family, because it enables me to purchase all the non-GMO and organic foods that I get at a lot less prices.
So what's nice is Thrive Market's prices are cheaper than your typical um, health food stores, so it enables you to stock up. My guys go through uh, catch-up like crazy. I have made my own, but without being uh, able to get my hands on the tomatoes this year, um, I am purchasing my organic catch-up through Thrive Market. Oh, that's not too bad then, Tammy, if they just limit it for a couple days at a time for the smoke to dissipate. That's, that's interesting, though. I'm, I'm glad you shared that. Never would have considered that. Because we're back in here away from everything, so we don't have those types of restrictions. Um, I know that they may have some in town. Um, uh, Chad had mentioned about winterizing your animals. That's really important, too. Um, we birthed our... Uh, milk goats in January, goodness, that was four, five years ago, four years ago, and um, there is a website for us here in Utah, I have to check it every day, oh wow, because of the qu air quality, Chad, and I know Tri-Cities, where, uh, um, up in Washington, too, uh, had really great problems this year holding the smoke. We, we, it was bad here too. I know that people with breathing problems were, were really struggling and they were offering oxygen from the um, uh, firehouses and ambulance areas for the people to go and actually get oxygen. Ours is by phone, Chad. Have to check multiple times a day. Wow, that's pretty crazy. That's They are his chore, and uh, that was a neat experience. But preparing for our animals for winter is really important so they're not out in the cold and suffering. I mean, some animals are meant to be in the cold, and, and they're bred for that. They have heavy coats. But making sure you have their food, uh, getting hay in, getting the grains in, and whatever else you need, and also being sure that you can supply sufficient water through the winter is really important. With our chicken coop, we put plastic up and close it off. Um, being off-grid, it gets a little tricky. We can't provide heat out there. Um, we have thought about doing um, propane heaters out there, uh, but they'd have to be up high, real high, and it's just this propane, the heaters like that are just a little bit um, a concern just in the event of fire. So up until now, we haven't really done anything. We put solar lighting out there to enable them to have longer lighting um, so that they lay longer. But um, some of the things people do used to do was heat rocks on their wood stove and take them out and put them on the floor of the chicken coop. But it gets really cold out here at times. Um, we let the snow insulate the coop and um, get hay and straw in there for them too. So, But they're pretty resilient. They just don't lay real good through the winter months unless we have heat in there. But just some things to consider. Um, yeah, so it's really smoky there yet, Chad. We Thankfully, with the uh, rains that we had, that really made a difference in our area. Uh, but, you know, it's, it still could blow in. Uh, I'm just grateful for the rain that it really uh, changed things out here. It was a real tinderbox and really sketchy. Uh, don't stock up on water and you lose power, you know, you're going to be sitting there. And water is one of your most important things. Food you can go for a length of time without, but water you cannot. We used to heat the coops, but haven't in a couple years. Even when it was 38, they did fine. I do he heat only bulbs, no light for our birds. Yeah, and see the heat with solar, the heat pools a lot of power. So we can't we can't utilize the heat bulbs um, unless we had a separate panel strictly for the chickens. But where their coop is, um, it wouldn't get good sun. Uh, 
we'd have to relocate it. It is on skids, so that has been a thought to uh, try to heat things up out there. But like like Tammy said, our our chickens do do fine. They don't let. Of our older birds um, this fall to make room in our coop and uh, put food in our bellies. So, um, and I'll tell you what, free range chickens get so nice and fatty, and ours are fed with non GMO um, food. So, when we butcher our chickens, the fat that is in those chickens, and oh, it's just amazing. I get such amazing, good bone broth. And um, some of you might freak when I say this, but when we do our turkey hunting and when we butcher our chickens, I save their feet. You can um, steam the feet and pull off the outer skin, which will also pull off the claws. So all the poop and debris and yuck that you would think would be on a chicken foot is no longer on the feet. It's just the, the actual foot and the cartilage and all the good stuff that makes really awesome broth. So when we are gearing up for our turkey season, um, Mountain Ben thought it was funny that I requested the feet. And that is why, because it produces such amazing broth. And then you can also dehydrate the bone broth that you create to create a powder so that you can use that to easily store and, and add to your soups and your dishes, which makes it really nice. Because my freezer is propane, so its cubic square foot is very small. So I can only put so much in there. So when you can dehydrate things and and can things and even freeze dry things, there are freeze dryers out there. I can't afford them, but I would love to have one. My dear friend is going to be getting one soon, and I'm so excited for her. So being able to have those tools to be able to utilize and, and preserve your food is huge. Also being able to smoke your meats. You know, in hunting season, um, we have smoked uh, turkey and chicken already, and we've done hams from the uh, deer, and uh, amazing, amazing, amazing meat. So to be able to know how to do those things is really, really important. Later on, when I'm finished here, I will add another resource in the description below. There's a lot of resources, by the way, guys, so check them out. Um, and I will add a, an encyclopedia for homesteaders in there that has all kinds of great knowledge on preserving food if you're new to it. And if you're new to pressure canning, I had uh, done a giveaway a couple weeks ago with the complete guide to pressure canning from my friend, uh, the Canning Diva. And uh, you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash pressure canning. It's a great book, and it really opens your mind to not just canning the individual fruits and vegetables, but actually canning um, chicken cacciatore, um, all kinds of tempting sometimes and it does make it a whole lot easier when you can just throw something in the pot heat it up and walk away um, rather than frying things up and cooking things up so we are on day three so say some prayers for us to make it through the rest of this 10-day process the mountain boy is struggling more than I like I said this is the first he's ever gone without two meals at a time um, and the first day was a complete liquid fast right now all we can have is veg uh, fruits and smoothies uh, so uh, it's not to his liking. He's like a grazer and grazes all day long and is used to eating. So, and I think he has two hollow legs, so this is very difficult for him. <laughs> so, those are the things I can think of for preparing for winter. And also, like I said, getting ready to pr plant your cool weather um, vegetables in your garden because you can do a second round. I, would, I am thinking that I'm going to do a bunch of kale this winter and this fall um, in the pots out back because I really enjoy uh, being able to steam kale and also to fry it up with coconut oil and uh, Himalayan season salt. Um, oh my goodness, it's so, so good. 
great green, great vegetable um, to keep you going through the winter months. And you can use kale for so much. So that's something that I think I'm going to be planting. How many of you are um, still gardening and pulling your summer harvest from the garden? And how many of you plant a fall crop? Uh, that was part of the winterizing your house and your car. Yes, garlic, garlic, garlic. Oh, goodness, yes. Garlic is one of our favorite staples, and garlic is so medicinal and useful in so, so many per uh, areas. So, yes, thank you, Chad. Garlic, garlic, garlic. <laughs> um, but winterizing your car is really important. As a young driver, I always had extra things in my car, you know, extra blankets, uh, clothes, water, um, now, where we are located, we take that a whole lot to, to a lot of different levels now um, because of our vastness out here and, you know, if we'll go out hunting, sometimes we'll go way back in. And one time we had, we went way back in with two friends um, and we got a flat tire or something in our tire. It was big. I think if I recall correctly, it was a bolt that actually went into our tire and um, we always carry uh, repair kits and also a pump. Um, of course the pump that we carry takes forever to pump a tire and thankfully we caught it right away, opened the truck door and you could just hear it hissing. So they pulled the bolt out and one of the guys stuck their finger in it while Glenn was getting the patch kit ready and we were actually able to patch it and get out of there. Otherwise the mountain man and I would have had a long walk while they hunkered down by the truck. Um, so being prepared in all circumstances and always is a benefit, but in the winter months, especially because hypothermia can really set in and really fast. Um, Tammy says she's still gardening beans, especially yum. I love beans. I miss, I think of my grandparents so much this time of year because I spent my ch childhood growing up with them gardening and helping them garden and can, and I just fresh vegetables, lima beans and corn and, ah, it's just such a good, good, good thing. Um, but in our cars and in our vehicles, we all, we have trucks out here right now. Um, the Mountain Boy has a minivan that's all-wheel drive, so we will see how that fares uh, this year in the snow. And uh, we always have the extra blankets, food, water, extra clothes, socks. Socks are a really good one to have if your feet get wet. Um, once your feet are cold, typically the rest of you is cold, so when you can heat yourself back up with your feet, um, that's really important. We also carry our day pack. Side note, always check your spare tire for air pressure when you check full up your car tires. Yeah, yes, very true, Chad, very true, because they can easily go flat, especially if they're in there for years without use, so good tip, thank you. Um, we also carry shovels and... Um, axes, hatchets, uh, chainsaw, uh, depending on where we're going and what the weather's been like, but it's really not a bad idea out here to have a chainsaw all the time because trees fall all the time on our lane, so we, to get in and out with a big tree, you'd be sitting there with an axe for a long time. We have done that already, um, but carrying a chainsaw is good and all your oils, um, making sure you have all your oils and fluids checked in your vehicles for the winter, um, ready to go, just like I said with your snow equipment. And um, the other things to have in your vehicle, having those spare oils and fluids can be a real help in a pinch. And um, we carry bumper jacks and come-alongs, chains, tow ropes. Uh, all the vehicles are equipped. Now, Mine I emptied because we're selling it, so I had it all cleaned out, but one thing I kept in there was my day pack, uh, just so I have my essentials and my necessities, and I have a blanket or two in there, 
and my reusable space blanket. The reusable space blankets and the non-reusable space blankets are really important to have in there. The non-reusable space blankets are a little bigger than a credit card and I carry them in my bags all the time just in case. Um, you break down and you, you're at a distance and you can't do anything but hunker in. That will help hold the heat into your body. It will also help deflect or reflect the heat onto you from your fire. Um, having multiple means of starting a fire is really important and practicing your fire skills. Uh, one of my friends down in Colorado goes into the backwoods on rescues a lot and he told me that it's just so sad to him that many times the people on snowmobiles and different equipment out there end up dying um, in the elements trying to start a fire. One of the incidents they were trying to start the things in their wallet on fire when right above them in the tree was dry tinder. They still had fuel or oil in their in their snowmobile even though it didn't work. So they could have easily stuck something down in there to get some of the fuel out to start a fire. So having that knowledge, common sense and thinking ahead and having all those things available is really, really important. And don't, yes, and don't forget the multi-flame tool, Chad says. Um, the Mountain Man fabricated our multi-flame tool, which is a fire piston. Um, which will start your fire in any um, weather situation. Uh, you utilize char, so we carry char with us. Char is um, charred cotton cloth. You can also char um, cattail fluff and um, all kinds of different things in the wild. But if you carry um, a little tin with you with your char in it and some extra cotton cloth, uh, an old sock, you can char um, your materials while you're actually out in um, the wild. So, <laughs> Chad said, place your order via their website. Yes, it's on our website and it's also on our Etsy store. Um, on our website, it's treyerwilderness.com slash store. And on Etsy, you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash slash shop. <laughs> Another tongue twister. Actually, the Mountain Boy has been selling his moccasins, and it's been really interesting. We shipped a pair to Ireland. We have a pair going out to Australia soon. And um, we shipped a fire tool to Guam, which is kind of funny because the Mountain Man is always joking about Guam and his spider monkeys. If you know the Mountain Man, you know what I'm talking about. If not, I'll have him share that with you sometime. He has been away from the camera for quite some time. He has been busy. Um, things are starting have started to pick up and um, we have a bunch of things to build so he and Mountain Ben are out at pretty much every day um, working on different pole barns and different structures and then in the winter months we have some flooring to do and some um, stone work to do on fireplaces so um, pretty excited God has blessed us you know we look for God to bless us in certain ways and sometimes that's not his way uh, he'll bless us in others so Despite our efforts to sell our home and our truck, that's not happening yet. Um, say some prayers, though, because we are considering listing it with a realtor. Um, so hopefully that will sell soon. Um, but God's got other plans. And again, it's all about trusting and being, you know, willing to accept what he has for us and his timing. So I want to end today on um, sharing this with you. This is... Uh, from Gentle Hugs for Hurting Hearts. Um, I mentioned this book a couple weeks ago. I don't know if I put a link up for it. But um, when I was in the shed packing things up to get us ready to be able to move stuff out of the house so we can finish the inside and also to prepare us for our move, um, my younger self was sharing such amazing things with me. I found a folder with all kinds of quotes and just really empowering materials. And this book was in there, and what was really unique is I honestly don't remember where this book came from. But this is a book written by a woman with a chronic illness. And um, Ashley, I recommend this book for you too. This is really, really neat. But this was her way of um, sharing her knowledge and helping others with chronic illnesses uh, to progress, kind of like the dancing um, elephant. Yes, dancing with the elephants. Um, or elephant dancing. I'm, I'm messing it up, but I think the link's below. Uh, that Ashley shared a couple weeks ago. I read that, and that is a really great book. And this, too, is 
uh, really good. And I thought, how how ironic that you know all those years ago, um, this was uh, in my shed on chronic illness, and I didn't have chronic illness then, but I do now. So uh, pretty interesting. Uh, please list again. Oh, prayer list again. Uh, we have Rachel, and um, for her gallbladder and Ashley for peace with the starting of school and Pat who is dealing with cancer and does anybody else have any prayer needs please don't hesitate to share them um, even if you're watching this after the fact uh, we do check back on the comments and we do reply to them so if you have prayer needs please don't hesitate so today's reading was called you are called each of us is called with a holy calling if we are children of God. He has a purpose and a will for each of us. If, if you feel you don't have the strength it takes to do His will, then realize that He will perform it in you. First, um, Philippians 1.6 is what it is. Sorry. It was... You only need the willingness to allow Him to do His work through you. He gives us strength enough for the tasks... He has for each one of us. Second Samuel twenty two thirty three. God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. For some of us, his task may be as light as being a prayer warrior and or an encourager. Prayer is extremely powerful. Prayer for yourself, your family, others you know and don't know, and for those in authority. Many say, I'll pray for you and promptly forget. You can be the one that remembers and keeps their word to pray. Keep a prayer journal and be amazed over time at all the answered prayers. It will uplift you. Maybe your gift is the gift of encouragement. What a wonderful gift. One of the enemy's greatest weapons is discouragement. If he can discourage a Christian, he will do it in any number of ways. If you encourage others to continue in the faith and reassurance, uh, reassure them of God's great love and their worth as a child of God, you have defeated the enemy himself in battle. You are a faithful soldier and servant in God's army. God can take physically weak people and make them powerful Christians. We only need to be willing to be his servants and have hearts wholly, wholly submitted to him. 2 Timothy 1.9 Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which has given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So, guys, if you're feeling weak and feeling unable to do what you feel you're called to do, that was really uh, screaming out to me. Um, I'm wearing many hats right now, and that's why you haven't seen a whole lot of me on Facebook other than my live videos, because I am wearing so many hats and have so many responsibilities that it's hard to shuffle it all. And it made me question my purpose. It made me question what I'm called to do. It made me question um, even my abilities and as to whether I'm reaching people. And I feel that that is what I'm called to be doing. So I've been doing a lot of soul searching and spending time in the Word and focusing on God and focusing on what needs to get done. And, you know, that was really funny that that was today's message. So it really spoke to me and I hope that it has also um, spoke to you in some way. Yes, what a sign. Only our Father. Praise Him. Exactly, Chad. Exactly. You know, and we need we need that uplifting. And if you are an encourager, and if your job is a prayer warrior, that is huge. There is so much power to prayer. Um, I know Pat and Ashley and Chad have seen God's hand at work. I and my family have seen God's hand at work in such tremendous ways. So... It's an amazing thing when you are given that gift to be the encourager or the prayer warrior. And, and it is important that if we say we're going to pray for people, that we actually do that task. And also, having a prayer journal is really huge. I have notes, but, you know, after reading that, I really think that I want to turn my notes into a journal because it is amazing to see how God works, not only in our lives, but in the lives of others and what encouragement there is when you can see God's hand at work in other people, not just ourselves. Pat says, God bless and you are always in my prayers. Thank you for the prayers from all of your prayer warriors. My cancer is under control. Thanks to you all. I am praying now for my heart, which is failing in Jesus name. 
Pat, you've got our prayers. You've definitely got our prayers. God can work miracles and heal. So we will pray for your healing. And I know Chad and Tammy and Ashley will be lifting you as well. So thanks for sharing that, Pat. And thanks for always being an encourager and someone that's there for me. Really appreciate you. <laughs> so guys, if you don't have anything else to share today, and feel free to share while I'm praying, but I'm going to say a quick prayer for us all. Dear Jesus, I come to you today and I just thank you for these amazing people that join me every week and take time out of their day and who are willing to uplift and pray and support the other members. It's just such an awesome community we have. And Lord, I know your abilities, I know your strength, and I just ask that you strengthen Chad today, give him courage beyond his recognition, and just help him to have peace and comfort. Be with Ashley and just help her have peace. I understand her position so well, and I understand her position in her healing. So, Lord, just continue to wrap your loving arms around her and help her to find the answers to things and just provide her with comfort, peace, and healing and, and just show her your presence. And, Lord, I ask that you wrap your loving arms around Pat and just heal his heart, uh, give him your peace and comfort, and continue to uh, strengthen him for his walk and allow him to be an encourager, an encouragement to others, as well as uh, a miracle in their eyes, Lord. He reaches and touches so many people, and we're just so blessed to have him. And Lord, I just ask that you please wrap your loving arms around everyone here and all those that are watching the replay. Lord, just give them strength and courage in their walk. We all walk through hard things. There's so much hard in our lives, but when we focus our eyes on you, the hard things aren't near as hard. And Lord, I just ask that you comfort these people, heal them, bless them, and for those that don't know you, help them to know you. And for those that don't know you and want to know you, that they have the courage to uh, reach out, they can private message and, and email us at any time, Lord, so that we can help them to find you and find the comfort and peace and joy that we share and the happiness we share in knowing you. And Lord, I just ask that you uh, just keep everyone safe and healthy until our next gathering. And I just thank you for what you're going to do in advance because I know it's going to be amazing. Lord, I just ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. And guys, hey George, welcome. <laughs> and um, guys, I just want to encourage you um, to pull into the Word. If you are a Christian, the Word is such a powerful place to find peace and comfort. And um, I'm just so excited that you guys... Uh, pull together as a community. It just really um, strengthens my heart and helps me to know that I am doing what I'm called to do, even though sometimes we question that and um, we wonder what our tasks are, are in life. If you're not sure, just focus on loving people and um, being true to yourself and living with intention and and you will find your purpose. But the more we love one another and the more we are there to support one another, the more we all have purpose in life. Um, the more we find our happiness. Because serving others is one of the best things we can do. You know, in my, in, in my circumstance, and what was really neat is reading this book that I just shared with you. Also, um, Dancing with Elephants. Um... That book also, you know, when, when, when people are sick and, and they are needing to heal and they're struggling, one of the unique things that God has called us to do is to love on others and to help others. And when we do that, when we're in a low place, it gives us purpose, but it also helps us to find our joy and our happiness when we may um, be losing that um, because of the circumstances we're in. And that also applies to just, you know, going through the rough times. You know, this year has been such a challenge for us and has been very grueling. The mountain man and I are very tired of our circumstances. We are very worn out, but we are still so awed at the blessings and the things that still continue to happen around us. And 
the more you focus on the good and the more you focus on loving those around you, the easier your hard times are, regardless how long they are. And if you think of the people in the Bible and how long they had to suffer through things, you know, our suffering is, is small in comparison and and Jesus too suffered so greatly, you know, and I try to keep that in perspective when I'm struggling with my illness and when I'm um, struggling. But remember, guys, our hard times are hard times. So don't discredit them and don't feel bad for feeling, um, for struggling, because that is part of the challenge that we go through. Um, and it's just a, a cycle because there's always going to be something coming our way and I think that each thing that we go through prepares us for the next so um, we become warriors and if we our focus is right we become tremendous warriors because we are able to show our strength and our courage and help others fight their fight so I don't know where that came from but evidently I was supposed to share that so Keep that in mind regardless what you're going through, regardless how big or how small your hard time is. You know, um, God's using you, and I, I know that you are a light to others in your journey, regardless if you see it or not. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me. As always, this is fun. You bring joy to my life and a purpose, and I am grateful, and I'm thankful that you take the time out of your busy days. So have a fantastic week. If you need something, private message me or email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com and get ready for your winter because it's going to come on fast. So take care, guys. Have a great day, and God bless. Love you.